Most apps keep track of pieces of information that change and update as you use the app. For example, a, a simple game can keep track of your score and the number of lives you have left as you play. Apps utilize the computer's memory to do this, and learning how to use that memory when programming is a really powerful skill. The most common way to leverage a computer's memory is by creating a variable. Now, a variable is, is just a container for storing a value, and once created, the variable is stored in the computer's memory, and it can be used and updated repeatedly throughout your program. As an example, let's use variables to keep track of the score and the number of lives remaining in a hypothetical game. Creating the variable is really easy. You use the word var followed by a label that you want to give the variable. You can choose any label you want, but it helps to choose a word that describes the variable that you want to store. So let's label our first variable score to keep track of the score. And then we can create a second variable to keep track of lives. Remember these labels. You'll need them later in order to use the variables. We can assign a value to the variable using the equal sign like this. Let's set our starting score to zero and our number of lives to three. Remember, you only need to use the var at the time that you want to create a new variable. A common mistake is to use it every single time you want to refer to a variable. Also, be sure to avoid mixing up the order when you call your variables. The labels got to appear on the left, and the value has to appear on the right. Like this. Not like this. Often, you'll want to create a variable and assign it a value right away. There's, there's a really convenient way to do this with one line of code. This is sometimes called initializing the variable. It's important to realize that this single line of code is actually doing two things. First, creating the variable, and then second, assigning it a value. Let's take a moment to talk about the equal sign. In many coding language, the equal symbol is called the assignment operator because you use it to assign a value to a variable. And you're probably used to seeing it in math, but in programming, it's a little bit different. If you were in math class and you saw this, something would definitely be wrong. Score can't possibly equal both 5 and 7, but this is not math class. With code, a computer is executing a set of instructions, one after the other. So this would just tell the computer to set score to 5, and then on the next line, set it to 7. In an effort to avoid confusion, programmers often don't use the word equals when we see this sign. Instead, they use the phrase, gets the value. So when we see a statement like this, we could read it as, score gets the value 7, or score gets 7 for short. Some programming languages avoid the confusion entirely by representing the assignment statements with a sideways arrow, like this. To use a variable, you just refer to it by its label. Anywhere the variable name appears in the program, the value currently stored in the variable will be retrieved from memory. The tricky part is that when using a variable, you often can't see visually what its value is. To bypass that problem, you can use write or console.log to display the value like this. This is a really handy trick, but remember there's a difference between showing the value of a variable and writing out the variable's label. When text appears in quotes, you're telling the computer to write those literal ASCII characters on the screen like this. But on the other hand, without quotes, the computer assumes that you're referring to a variable called score, and it will attempt to retrieve its value. If you haven't made that variable, then the computer will give an error. <laughs>